and welcome back to Real Life Fishing. Uh, this is uh, Season 1, Episode 5, and we're going to focus on uh, mapping a little bit more here. Because um, again, this is, this is pretty important stuff, right? So right now I've just got the, uh, the Lake Master map loaded, right? So you buy a, a brand new Lake Master card, and uh, this is what you're going to get for this lake, right? That rock uh, waypoint, I added that. Um, that it was not on the map, of course, right? Um, so it says our bolt launch is up here. And then it shows that uh, there's an island here, right? But uh, if we zoom in and look at where that rock is, according to the Lake Master map, that should be 15 or so feet of water, right? Between 10 and 15 feet of water. Um, you know, we've just got five foot contours here. I mean, I'm zoomed into 50 feet, right? But, you know, we've just got five foot contours in this lake. So we can't do uh, follow the contour with, uh, with the trolling motor on this because you need one foot contours to do that. But uh, yeah, so you can, you can see what Lake Master says this, uh, this lake should look like, right? And uh, if you're wondering where that information came from, most times, it comes from here. So this is a map of the lake that's published by DNR. And if we go back and compare this, pretty similar, right? In terms of the, uh, the contour lines, um, you can see this deep pool here. And you see most of this, this bay is, you know, between 10 and 15. Uh, and we come over here and we look and we see the same thing, right? We see here's the 10 foot contour and then that's the 15 foot contour out there. And there's your, your deeper pool. Um, you know, they're saying that, uh, that point gets a little, a little more shallow around that point. And, uh, you know, if we go and look at that point, yeah, you know, you can see the contour lines are stacked up a little more there, right? So that's where your maps come from and uh, as I understand it the way that these maps were created uh, according to this map it was created in 1967 so uh, they didn't have you know electronics and you know all these fancy hummingbird sonar and record stuff and, and so forth uh, in 1967 um, you know hell they didn't even have computers right so they they drew this by hand um, but uh, as I understand it the the story goes that um, a DNR uh, contracted with um, University of Wisconsin and some of their grad students went out and they would just draw a grid, you know, they draw the, the lake and then they draw a grid on it and they'd go out there and they would, uh, they would just drop a rope in the water, you know, with a, an anchor on the end of it or a, you know, a, a brick or whatever and uh, let it hit the bottom and then they'd, they'd mark it off and haul it back up, right? And uh, it's called marking the twain. Um, you know, that's where Mark Twain got, Mark Twain rather, got his nom de plume from. But uh, in any event, um, you know, so they would just go periodically uh, along this grid and they'd drop that rope in the water and haul it back up and mark how many feet it was till it hit the bottom, right? And, you know, they didn't do that every foot or every two feet on the lake, right? They, they did it in, you know, certain spots on that, on that grid and then they would come in and they'd they draw the rest of the contours in, estimating them as, as good as they could by hand. And, uh, you know, sometimes they did better than others. Um, so if we come back over here and uh, we load up the map that I have now. So go to map overlay, auto chart. So now we can see that the lake looks uh, a little bit different, right? And we can see that where that rock is marked, there's a pretty shallow bar there. I mean, that, that's marked as a hazard um, because my buddy hit it. Uh, luckily for us, he was, he was recording at the time. Um, yeah, luckily for us, he was, he was recording at the time that he did that. But, uh, so I wanna show you what that looks like, right? So yesterday we went over how to how to record uh, uh, sonar, right? And so here's a auto chart zero lines card, right? 
and we're gonna I use one of these things to to read it it's just a USB uh, SD card reader right so we're gonna put our zero lines card into there and then plug that into the computer if I can find the USB slot there we go <clears throat> so perfect and then we'll go over to uh, auto chart and so here's that same lake right so that's all the sonar data that uh, we have recorded for this lake um, so if I center this up a little bit better and then zoom in So you can clearly see, right, here's the, uh, the island. And then this is where my buddy ran aground, uh, right there. He hit that rock. So you can, you can see that he drove into it and then he had to back out, right? He said when he hit that, uh, it actually stalled his outboard. Um, you know, so we haven't, we haven't driven in at all in here, right? We haven't gotten very close on this side either. I mean, you can, you can obviously see that. Uh, but looking at this map, right, you can you can see that it thinks that up in here between the island and that and that hazard, it thinks this is still deep water, right? And so that's one thing to be careful of when you don't have all of the data yet, right? You can see all the tracks that we've driven. So this what this software does then is it uses this track on the left and it'll use this track over here on the right, and it's going to try and extrapolate from that to create what it thinks the water depth in here should be, right? So. These maps are only as accurate as the amount of data that you have for them. Uh, but more importantly as well, remember what we talked about with that puck back there. They're only as accurate as the location information that you have as well, right? And I did make sure when we rigged up my buddy's boat that he does have one of those pucks back there. So his, his GPS information is accurate. I trust on this map that that is where he hit that rock, right? I know that. But so... So we've got all this data, right? So now what, what do we do with it? How do we, how do we create a map, right? We've, we've already got it loaded. Um, so I'm just gonna go up here. And that's the create map button. So I'm just gonna click that. And it's gonna think about this for just a second. There we go, and now we've got a map. And so I can zoom in on this. Oh, I've gotta change my uh, Change my settings here real quick. I had it set to ignore the shorelines. I was on a lake that uh, the water level was very high. And so some of the islands were submerged. Um, so let me, my apologies here, let me redo this real quick. So there we go. Got that setting changed, map here. Show all of our recording paths and then generate a map. <clears throat> there we go, that looks better now. There, so we come in here and look at this and we can see, there you go. We've got a 23 foot deep hole over there and then here's where it thinks, you know, or here's where, uh, here's where my buddy hit that rock, right? So you generate your map and then you um, upload it to the Lake Master card. Just, you know, click that button there, Lake Master update. And it'll put it on your uh, your zero lines card, and then you can put the zero lines card in the graph, and then you get your data here. And good stuff. All right, well, for the first time ever, we're gonna finish a video under 10 minutes. Hope you guys found this informational, and uh, I'm sure we'll do some more on this topic later. It's a very important one to me. Have a good one.